Pritchard in the lane. Stuck there. Hauser, can he be the man? No whistle. Tillman with a game winner for the Celtics. Never a doubt. 101 to 100. <laughs> they get the win over the Sacramento Kings. Go to 61 and 16 on the season. Tom Giles, Chris Forsberg at Celtics post game live. There you go. X going to give it to you. Celtics scored three points in the first six minutes of this game. They scored three <laughs> points in the last six minutes of this game, and they got the win. Kings over should be embarrassed. A, the Kings really needed this one. <laughs> they, so, they waited a little too long to make their run. Look, and, and if you're sitting here obsessing about the fact that the Celtics gave up that 18-point, 19-point lead over the few, final few minutes and made this interesting, I mean, just forget it. The Kings needed this game. They were a desperate team. They gave everything they had trying to get in on the second night of a back-to-back to find a way to win as they start sliding into the play-in in the West. And the Celtics threw out a young, inexperienced lineup and pretty much challenged those guys, figure it out. And they did. Even they weren't perfect, far from it. But in the big moment, Sam Hauser stays with it, keeps yep. that play alive, even after a terrible shooting night where he could have checked out completely. And X hits the little, the little runner to give, you the, to give you the win. And so I, I love that he's putting guys in this situation. Will they be in this moment in a playoff game? Probably not. But what happens if, if someone has to be in that moment? Then this is a great learning experience for everybody on that roster. And I feel like the fact that they were able to find a way is the bottom line to me. Yeah, find a way to get the win. And, and, and again, it's, you saw the Kings take the lead there on a bank three by De'Aaron Fox. Mm. So all of a sudden the Celtics are behind in this game, which seems unfathomable, being up by 19 uh, in the fourth quarter. But – you know, Xavier Tillman, right place, right time, makes the shot, and uh, that's what mattered most. Meanwhile, let's go back to, and, and again, the starter's really not playing a factor here for most of the fourth quarter, but Kristaps Porzingis in his limited minutes, uh, 24 minutes to be exact, 20 points, 11 rebounds for uh, KP tonight, Chris. Yeah, and so, like, look, there was that little stretch coming back from the, the calf injury that it didn't look like himself or as impactful as he was maybe at the start of the year. But my goodness, the last few games, I would say, maybe the last week, He's just kind of starting to turn it up a little bit. And you just, you're just you starting to remember, oh, yeah, like if there's a little bit of a lull or you need to get yourself going, like tonight where he has the steal early to go in and gets in transition, find him on the blocks, you get the threes, you see the energy on both sides of the court. Man, like this guy is going to be so vital to whatever they do mid-April to hopefully mid-June. And you can just, it's a reminder right here that, and we're only seeing it in small doses, and even for whatever reason, he didn't start the second half there. They brought him in after like two plays. Yeah. But I do think these are just like sort of the instances where, oh, yeah, he's going to be vital. He's going to be really important. And a, a, just a reminder of what he can do. Now imagine when he's up at 35, 38 minutes per game and how that stat line is going to be off the charts. Yeah, I also love the fact that he plays the game with joy. And he's done it a uh, few times tonight. We'll, we'll actually look at some of that video coming up later on. But right now we wanted to uh, head back out to the garden where we have uh, Abby standing by with Peyton Pritchard, who had 21. Peyton, Sacramento is fighting for their playoff lives. How did you guys close this one out? Take me through those last few possessions. Dude, they, they made a, a big push right there. They started hitting. Uh, we missed a couple of shots, but, uh, you know, we took care of it. At the end of business, uh, X hit a big shot, so put us over the hump. How valuable can those experiences be? We saw Jordan on the floor as well. These moments for you guys. Uh, it's definitely it's good it's good for us. I mean, we just keep growing, learning from experiences like this, and uh, keep growing our game. So when the time comes, we can help the team. You now hold the franchise record for five plus threes coming off the bench. What kind of flow did you find here? Uh, I, I feel like I was in good rhythm. Uh, you know, my finger, my middle finger is a little bit better. It's been jammed up a lot the last couple of games, so today felt a little bit better. We talked at halftime about working on things. What are you working on personally these last handful of games, knowing you're going to get some extended run? Just figuring out how to win games and, uh, you know, controlling the tempo, the pace, uh, finding ways to, you know, affect the game and obviously lead our team to win. So, Got win number 61 tonight. Peyton, thanks. Congrats. Thank you. Let's bring in Scal now back at the Garden. Scal, obviously, we got to start with late game execution here for the Celtics and the fact that they were able to get that game win from Xavier Tillman. Ow! In all seriousness, though, <laughs> he's, he's clearly getting it. He's having a great time. How, how, how does this feel, though, for those guys that are on the floor, for them to be able to make the plays on the stretch, Xavier Tillman in particular, to get that game-winning shot for those guys to have that opportunity? 
Yeah, because uh, you're going to sleep better at night than him making that shot. Remember, let's be real. You were counting our late game execution. They went on a 16 to one <laughs> run, Tom Giles. So, uh, but it's finding a way. And when that happens and you lose, the next morning you wake up and you know something's wrong. When that happens and you win, you move past it and you get back and you get back to work. So, yeah, I think it was it was a big play, and I think more than anything. Give Sam Hauser credit for knocking that ball free. A lot of guys who have a rough night, can't knock down a shot, get blocked at the rim, and all of a sudden give up on a play. He stuck with it, knocked the ball free, and, and Tillman, you know, had a really nice move into a soft touch. Yeah, and, like, look, since Tillman's come back from the injury, same deal. I think he's been a little bit up and down, maybe not as crisp as he was when uh, he first got here. And, like, a moment like this matters, you know? Thrown into a tough situation, makes a play, gets you to the finish line of a win feels better about himself, is that those things can snowball for a guy who should probably find his way into the playoff rotation. Scal, more importantly, like we were talking about Chris Stops, how good he was out there. Mm. What did you notice from him out there? Yeah, he really is unguardable with this team. And, and if you put him in a situation where he sets a flare screen, people are going to go to Jason Tatum. He takes advantage of it. It is like it's almost as if the coaches are just saying, you know what? We have to stop Tatum. We have to stop Brown. We have to stop the Celtics three-point shooting. We can't get blitzed on those plays. So what's happening is Porzingis is taking advantage of it. And I don't think they've made adjustments to it. They're not double-teaming Porzingis. They're keeping him one-on-one. And they're, they're, they're leaving smaller guys on him. So unless something different happens, like I think the coaches are probably going to say if anybody, if anybody can beat us, it's going to be Porzingis. And I like the way the Celtics are force-feeding him the ball and making that happen. I and mean, it doesn't seem like that's going to go away. And I don't think that coaches will make different adjustments if they haven't already.